Welcome back to the workshop. It's great to have you here. This is part two of me making bonsai scissors. I'm really excited to be making a pair of these because I've always wanted to give them a try. But it's also very important because I have a ridiculous mop on my hair currently. And with barber shops closed, we think it would be quite a laugh if we had Mrs. Steele cut my hair with scissors that I made. So hopefully they cut well. It's a lovely Sunday. We're joined by not one, not two, but three beautiful ladies here in the workshop. Watch the latest episode to find out who this little munchkin is. Now the first step in finishing these scissors is likely to be to get a very nice and very flat reference surface upon which they're going to pivot. So let's get to it! Woo! We got the basics of a pair of scissors, but this is where we get into the nitty gritty. You know, I was saying scissors are more complicated than they might seem. Well, let's talk about that. Have you ever noticed on a pair of scissors that there is in fact, oftentimes, a curve to the blades? You'll also note that as you close the scissors, air is opened up behind where the two edges are meeting, and eventually when you close them all the way to the tip, there is a gap the whole way across. These are my everyday carry scissors. We sell them, by the way. I love having these on me. Leatherman Raptors. And even on these big beefy trauma shears, same thing happens. And that's why you get that feeling of resistance on a pair of scissors as you close them without anything in there. I once listened to a talk about scissor making by Grace Horn, as she's picked up a huge amount of information about scissor making and is now making scissors into utterly mind-blowing works of art. And that's where I first picked up that in fact a correct scissor blade needs a curve in it. We don't want it to be just like two rulers sliding together, because then instead of cutting, the rulers will split apart. So when you have a look at this exaggerated view of how a pair of scissors cuts, you'll see that the curved scissor blades, as they cut, are creating a tension from the spring of the blades that pushes the two edges together to hopefully actually shear the paper. It's that sideways tension that is the key to a good pair of scissors. So this is the challenge. How do I make sure these have the appropriate amount of sideways tension? Well, in the end, we're gonna hammer a hollow into here so they do force themselves against each other. But how we prep our pivot area is gonna be of importance because the angle at which it wants to pivot is gonna be affecting things. Right now, our pivot area is sending things into a taper towards the tip. So we've got to work out, is the taper towards the tip gonna be good? Or as we pivot, will that actually accidentally open up the tips? Now I don't fully understand how this is gonna work, so we're gonna make it in 3D. Oh. I don't think it matters. Hmm, does it, does it not? Oh, interesting. There we go, now we're learning things. I thought something funny would happen. If you pivot on a taper, this surface rotates out and then you create a gap. You can't pivot on a taper. Not with them being riveted, it's just not gonna work. So that means I've got an issue and it's of extreme importance that my pivot area is not only flat, but parallel without any taper. The pivot area is much flatter now, but of course these need to be identical in profile. So we're gonna clamp them together and finish grind the profile of the tips like that. I just have absolutely no idea where I'm going with this. It's very difficult. I have no idea what I'm doing. Where the pivot is, is gonna dictate how the edges, I mean, it's, it's just a big moving puzzle. I've decided now I want to get rid of this ground texture so that it's just forge texture. <laughs> I have no idea where the middle of this thing is. You know what, Jamie? I'm just gonna eyeball it. You're not gonna sell it for $35,000, I don't think these ones are gonna be sold for $35,000. There's that's nowhere near the middle. Okay, it's not near the middle, is it? There we go, much better. It's not in the middle. That's ghastly. Look how uncentered this is. Since I can't center punch, 
very accurately. We'll see if this helps. So we still got to drill through that first layer of 1080 and I can tell you it is feeling exceptionally hard. Fortunately, I have this carbide spot drill. <laughs> well, that's not working. Lovely. Carbide drill bit is now dull, and we're not making much progress with this. Drill! Yes! Yes, she hath drilled! Next up is bevel grinding time. We're going back into the forge, this time with the blades to first of all, get that bend into the blades as we demonstrated earlier. And then we'll take another heat and we'll quench them. Into the quench. While we get the blades tempering, I'm gonna be making two washers out of bronze and a steel rivet and that's gonna be how we secure the thing together. The rivet and washers are done. All right, let's put it together. It does not want to go together. I think the rivet's the wrong size. <laughs> oh, there we go. Calipers must have been broken. We're gonna do a little test fit with a nut and bolt. Does the edge close? Ah! The edge only closes at this point in the travel. It looks like I'm cutting the actual, ah! Mm, mm, ah! Ah, it's so painful! Let's see, will they cut? Oh my goodness, they actually cut. What? That's insanity. They actually cut. I thought we were gonna be fiddling for hours. Snip, snip, snip. I think one of these blades though is much too bent. This outer one needs straightening. There we go, much better. I wanna stop these crossing over so they don't pinch anybody else's hands. Time for the secondary bevel. Ah, they're cutting into themselves. Okay, so I've sharpened them and now they're no longer closing the whole way, they stop. They are still not working. Jamie did tell me, just leave them how they are about an hour ago. They're cutting now, don't mess with them anymore. If I'd have left them as they is, I'd be getting my hair cut right now. I've ruined all my nice work. This is a nightmare. Oh, look at that! Now they're perfect, that's a pair of scissors. Okay, I'm not doing any more hammering on them. Well, I do want to just say, they, they, they're pretty good now, but they were better still. They were not better, this, is, this is the best. I'm know, pleased that I'd put all this extra work in this. They were, were better. <laughs> It's been such a nightmare. They were working so perfectly and then I hit them and then they stopped working. On to the riveting. It's time for the haircut. <laughs> it's so cold! <laughs> My face! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I don't think my scissors are very good. So what's your verdict on the scissors? They don't cut. They don't cut. Okay. I think my scissors are not very good.
please give a round of applause in the comments down below to Mrs. Steele for her helping cutting my hair, as well to Jamie. Neither of them are hairdressers, but they gave it a shot. And regrettably, my scissors uh, were not as useful as a pair of hair clippers. But that's okay. I'm very pleased we got to make them nonetheless. I want to give you guys a quick reminder that season two of Forged with Steel is airing on Sky History UK this Thursday at 10 p.m. to check it out if you're here in the UK. And aside from that, this episode was sponsored by Cove. And that split speaker. How cool is this? You got 30 foot of Bluetooth range. You can split the speakers, get yourself some surround sound tunes going. You can really get a groove on with these speakers. On a single charge, you'll get seven hours of music playback. It's water resistant, has a built-in microphone, so you could even take calls on it. And it's effectively like getting two speakers for the price of one at an utterly unbeatable price. And it's an especially unbeatable price when you get 67% off. At my link in the description down below, which is covaudio.com forward slash AS67. These things are beautiful. I really hope you go get one. And a big thank you is owed to Covaudio for sponsoring this episode. 